Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Nikolai. Today, I'm here with Miles Thatch, who is a multimedia developer. Hey, everyone. How's it going? So for the people at home who don't know, what is a multimedia developer? Uh, a multimedia developer is really just a fancy way of saying uh, I'm involved in too many projects. Uh, <laughs> if, basically, video game development, programming, any sort of arts, painting, music. Uh, if you're if you like all of that stuff, if you have multiple different projects going on at the same time, maybe some film on the side, some uh, YouTube videos, some skits, you're basically a multimedia developer. Okay, now out of all of those things, music and game development and stuff like that, what did you start with specifically? Uh, I started with music. I started with music very early, uh, back when I think back when I played the Hitman Codename Forty Seven uh, game for the first time. That that end credit soundtrack uh, when the camera lifts up that got me so good in it just inspired me to like i want to be able to do this kind of stuff and it's kind of weird because it's it started with video game music so it just got me into experimenting with with audio programs and music writing and just kind of kind of went downhill from then on <laughs> that's awesome man uh, i can definitely tell that that moment in your life inspired you and that's cool that you went with that um for everybody at home, uh, me and Miles actually met on on Twitch. Uh, I was doing some streaming in the programming channel, as was he, and uh, he actually popped into my channel, uh, introduced himself, you know, asked if you know we'd be interested in working together on some stuff, and that's when you kind of you showed me some of the projects you were working on, and uh, since then we've had a friendship. Um, and you you also have a YouTube channel, is that right? Yeah, I um, run a, a multiple YouTube channels for, once again, various aspects that interest me. Uh, but one of the most developed ones is basically the game development channel. Uh, I try to do live streams for most of the projects I work on. Most of this is concept art and programming and general game development. Uh, and during these live streams, you sometimes have a lot of these empty pockets where it's just you working on something and no thoughts come to mind and at that point i kind of thought it would be nice to have somebody in the voice chat and talk to them and discuss various things because it doesn't really doesn't really impale your ability to do the creative stuff well i hope i helped you out in some way shape or form <laughs> um, but a uh, one big thing that we do uh want to talk about today is uh so you you have created a game with with another person um and that game goes by the name of r tag rise so yes, could, that's right. could you tell us who you worked on this with and can you tell us a little bit about this game? So this game is the brainchild of myself and Timothy Canner, who is my high school best friend. We we met in high school and we kind of have the same mental condition, so we ended up clicking very well. Um, and we ended up doing organizing a, a gaming channel uh, during which we were trying to basically play the retro more or less retro games or old games um and at some point we came across the game called super meat boy uh this was a solo game so it was me sitting on the couch and my friend is playing the game and losing his mind um and at some point at some point both of us thought this particular level would be fun in co-op and would not would it not be fun if Super Meat Boy had a co-op mode? Um, and I mean, this was 2008, and what like 10 years later, or whatnot, uh, that never came. Uh, and after after a little while, I figured, screw it, I'll make my own Super Meat Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that got the inspiration to kind of get into the platformer game genre and start experimenting with the uh, with various. Uh, various solutions that's awesome i checked out the trailer i actually retweeted it the game looks sick i definitely 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 want to try it out what i thought was cool is uh you are actually a character in the game is that true yes uh we figured it, it kind of ties in into our youtube channel and just the opportunity to maybe promote uh cross promote various types of media uh in one form or another uh for example in our youtube channel i use 
almost exclusively the music that I write. Uh, it, it ensures no copyright strikes, and it kind of gives me a chance to write something specifically catered to our flavor of uh, content. Uh, and with, with that said, uh, to promote ourselves and to, pro to uh, promote our channel, we figured we can make ourselves uh, into game characters. And right now the game is called Artag Rise, Retroactive Gamers Rise. So That's awesome. right now, the, the more we go into game development with this particular project, the more we kind of feel like the game's evolving and we're going to probably need to make a more appropriate title. But for now, that's what it is. Uh, we play as a one of the pair of main characters that you can play as uh, in this game. Well, if you're watching at home and you want to play with me, dibs on Miles. That's who I'm playing. Uh, and you, you said uh, you you design the music for the game. I, I'm interested to know what what type of genre game would would you classify this game as, and what style of music did you personally pick for this game, and why? So usually, when you think about game development, the first thing that comes to mind is score music or soundtracks music, uh, which has its own distinct um mark uh over anything you listen in the radio or anything you listen on, on spotify uh soundtracks or scores um they have a very atmosphere describing uh purpose behind them and uh, aesthetic so a lot of the music on my phone is actually music from video games uh a lot of it is silent hill music and i <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> It's it, it it just suits uh, it it suits my taste. Um, but with our tag rise, what happens is uh, there's so many ideas that I have for music that um, the solution to what sort of genre I wanted to pick sort of kind of became self-explanatory once we we implemented the whole multi uh, multi protagonist storyline where you follow the stories of multiple different protagonists. Um, this actually gives me the ability to tell multiple different stories uh, based on multiple different genres and likewise the music would have to be different for each story uh, so for Tim and Milo questline we can definitely go for more quirky dance EDM style um, drum and bass uh, while atmospheric areas can always be scores can always be soundtracks and ambient music uh, the other characters would have a bit more of a classical, a bit more of a, not not classical as in uh, just orchestras, but classical video game music, so classical scores. Uh, and it gives you a lot of freedom also based on which quest you're doing and which story you're doing. Um, as uh, this game is not only multi-genre in music, but it's also multi-genre in the, uh, the genre of the story. So we have hints of horror, and hints of comedy uh, involved in just multiple various uh, quest lines. And I think you kind of get all of that within the trailer. Please, you got to check out the trailer. The first thing I noticed was the music. I loved it. I immediately started like moving. Um, and there's a few funny things thrown in there as well. I won't spoil anything. <laughs> to get down to actually like developing the game outside of like the music or the story, uh, did you program to make this? Like, if so, like what languages did you use? Uh, how long have you been making this game for? Um, this game has been in production, I think, for the past three or four years. Uh, the production of this game was kind of an on and off affair just because as a single developer, you tend to experience a lot of burnout. So uh, either I could plow through it and maybe hope that the quality would not get impaled uh but in my case i decided to switch to working on some other project and i would always find myself going back to our tech rise and i would always without fail find new ways to improve the game uh from that point on the the game is be uh is be, uh, the game is built in the game maker studio engine uh which offers its own proprietary language which is very similar to uh, C++ from at least from my personal experience um, and it actually migrated from the Game Maker Studio 1.4 engine uh, and back then when it came out I think the game was started in 1.2 and then it migrated to Game Maker Studio 2 engine uh, <laughs> and the the core of the game 
pretty much has been rewritten, I think, maybe three times, three, four times at least, uh, when I would discover some new aspect, new, better way of doing something. Uh, it, it, it probably, uh, you know how they say, if you replace each part of a boat throughout, you know, like 20 years, and you've replaced each part, is it still the same boat? Right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes, so, not. Yeah. So in in the same sense, there's there's been there's been parts that have been ripped out and recoded and put back in, but there's also been parts where I would have to rewrite the entire major chunk that th that does not make uh, a game that the game is, does not exist without. Uh, and oof, as painful as it is, I can't say that I really regret it because there's just been improvements all around. It it. It does look really cool. Um, now you said Game Maker Studio, right? Mm -hmm. Is that is that like a free program? Like, let's say somebody's watching this and they maybe want to start making their own game. Is that is that a free program, or how exactly did you get that? So Game Maker Studio uh, is not a free program in itself. There's there's plenty of free engines uh, that you can use, but essentially it's it's a self sustained game engine. You don't really need any external tools realistically to make a game in it it has its own visual editor it has its own programming language and uh, ways to handle audio files uh but realistically it it gives you all the tools you need to make uh, a game now i got introduced to game maker studio i think back when i was still researching how i would enter into the field of game development uh, and i think this was way way back in high school i think maybe like grade 10 we had an actual game development course in a high school That's it was awesome. terrible it was <laughs> terrible don't get me wrong um it taught you how to use drag and drop stuff uh which is i mean in my personal opinion a terrible way to make games um but especially when that high school also had a javascript or, or a java course uh that doesn't have a drag and drop <laughs> method but uh i got i found out about game maker studio then um and i i looked into it it seemed all right uh game maker studio 1.4 at that point just came out and uh it had i i believe it had a free version at that point already which allowed me to to make some sort of a game but it would have uh the engine logo um at the start of it and I was limited to some resources and, and how many platforms I could export the game to. But then I ended up just, you know, saving up uh, for my part-time job and buying the license of it. Um, and ever since then, the Game Maker Studio 2 has been released. And that I it, it allows you to port the project from one to another with just a few minor tweaks uh, and continue working on that on. It's And it's an infinite improvement. Um, with Game Maker Studio 2, they offer more ways of actually getting into uh, developing a game with that particular engine. Uh, they do offer a free version of uh, Studio 2. It is limited in uh, some ways. You can't make quite as big of a game as you can in the premium version. But then again, a premium version is only about 120 bucks, uh, And I'm talking Canadian, so it's like 99 bucks American. Um, so they offer the license for what is an extremely reasonable price from the game development standpoint, because engines usually cost thousands of dollars, or they used to cost thousands of dollars. For example, in the Unreal Engine uh, 3 uh, case. Uh, but they also offer this really, really nice feature where I think you pay 39 or 49 bucks. Uh, and once again, I'm talking Canadian rupees. Um, <laughs> and you get access to the full version of Game Maker Studio for a year. Uh, and you, you have access to all the tools, no restrictions, no limitations. And if you wish, sometime during that year, you can upgrade at a discount. So you basically uh, don't have to pay the full full val uh, value. And you have access to all these tools. Yeah, like $100 isn't too bad, right? Like that's a Christmas gift. That That's a birthday yeah, gift. Much. You know, it, it can definitely be done. Uh, you, you've touched on it maybe a little bit, um, but I'm curious to know what was like the hardest part about designing this particular game or just games in general. I know you mentioned things like, you know, you had to go back and rewrite a few pieces of code. 
Um, also, sometimes, you know, you hit a block. It's just, you know, as a single developer. Um, outside of those two things, was there anything else that you found pretty challenging? Or, and is there any tips that you can give the people at home? To be honest, now that I look at it from my current stance, all of those all of those roadblocks and all of those issues and challenges that I had to face just seem so minute. Um, it's it's not after you realize how something works when you realize just how simple it is. So it's kind of difficult for me to now in my position to say what exactly would be challenging about building a game or a game like that um, to somebody who just wants to get into game development. Because uh, realistically, your challenge is only the ability to learn something uh, and the persistence to learn something. A lot of a lot of my roadblocks have been cleared by just sheer stubbornness, sitting in front of the code screen, trying things out uh, when, you know, all the help that can help you is probably asleep in some other part of the world. Uh, if you're trying to consult with somebody on the forum, it's just it. most of the challenges really come from persistence um and uh dealing with the biggest issue in indie game development which is burnout uh mm -hmm. and this is this to be honest this is strictly strictly the indie dev scene of developers like myself who don't work with a budget we just kind of put our own time and heart into a project and uh just kind of want to see it happen uh want to see see it work out because uh, it it becomes a bit of a different case when you actually work with a budget and you actually work with um uh, you actually work in some sort of source uh, of funding uh in that case the question is different the question is about organization uh and uh, time management now this game uh it's it's in a, a beta early access type of phase right now is that right uh, yeah, we had this game put up on early access just to see what happens. This is an important stage in the development of any game. You need to, as quickly as possible, to get to a point where you have something that stands on its own. And the moment we reach that point, we've put up a game on early access just to see what happens. Um, and a lot of very interesting things um, have become very clear once that happens. Uh, mostly it, it's the importance of uh, growing an audience uh, and engaging with the people and finding ways to expose your game to an audience and interesting uh, and engaging with the people who are interested in the project. Um, that realistically uh, is, is a major point uh, that we kind of got to know once we put the game up on early access. Uh, an audience is everything. To you as a game developer who wants to put up a game uh, a project that is successful uh, so early access is still on steam it's just there to be there we're not really actively promoting it because the game is not in the stage where we can promote it uh, and the game is not in the stage where we're looking to get people to buy the game play the game and put a review on, on it right we're looking more for um for coming across bugs that we have missed some some stupid weird conditions that throw an error like for example something that i did not anticipate is once the game came out uh once we put up the game on early access i have sent a key to tim who's the other guy uh my friend helping me to develop this game i've sent the key to him uh and he opened up the game and the first thing he did is he slammed all of his paws on the keyboard and that threw an error yeah that and that caused the game to crash and he sent me the screenshot of it, and I realized that I left a little debugging thing uh, that uh, when you press a button, it spawns these interactive particles I was working on. Uh, and I had that button in place for testing so I can quickly spawn particles and see how they behave. And I that particle is not supposed to exist in the main menu, which is why if you press the button, it throws an error. So I left that in. I totally forgot about it. And, you know, this is just an unexpected thing. I, I did not expect anybody to just bash their hand on the keyboard. Yeah, right? Like, why would you? Because right? yeah. it was like this obscure combination of keys that I thought I, I had to map because I already had a bunch of keys mapped to other functions. So I'm like, okay, it's like shift A, demonic incantation, F7, <laughs> right? And he, I don't know how he got it, but 
you know that's what we need beta testing for we just need the game to be out there to be exposed to the elements the elements of gamers and all their shenanigans that's awesome maybe who knows maybe you'll end up keeping it um you may know it, you may not, but like way back in the day, uh, there was Pokemon on like the Game Boy. And when yep. the game started up, if like there's the uh, up, down, left, right, and if you took your thumb and you went around the cir- circle like that, uh, it actually changed the colors and it, and it changed the whole colors of the whole game. It made it like. Uh, <laughs> so maybe you could kind of have some kind of like secret like that where, you know, if you do press a certain combination of keys, maybe it like warps all the colors or who knows, you know, sometimes mistakes are end up being cool ideas so you never know it's, but it's kind of like the um the crate of um crate of groceries in hitman blood money uh that in the item description if you pick up an item it shows up in your inventory and you don't usually go to the inventory to look at this particular item too often or at all you don't really have reason it's, your character is already carrying it but if you go into the inventory and look at the description of this item it says developer's name please add more detail awesome yeah so this was this was left in the re-release of the game and all the games afterwards have a little easter egg and like the promotional footage that says developer name i I forget what his name is like where's that detail we were talking about (laughs) that's awesome yeah and you know it could just be this easter egg thing um you know tons of possibilities but that's cool and you know i'll definitely try my best to you know tinker with it a little bit and, and send you some feedback how exactly mm-hmm. can people send you feedback like let's say someone watching right now plays the game and uh maybe after the start menu they slam their hands on the keyboard is there a certain way in game to send you feedback or is this via email how, how can this be done uh well the benefit of this particular engine is that uh, it gives you uh an error screen that pops up whenever there's some sort of a uh, a code syntax error that happens that you have not uh, foreseen. Maybe you have some special exception that uh, only happens when um, you know some obscure condition is met. Yeah. It's not just going to, for the most part, as far as my experience goes, it's not just going to crash the game. It's actually going to give you a white box that tells you where the error occurred and what the error is and gives you the general idea of what it is. So. Um, in terms of bug submissions, uh, there isn't a built-in system because once the game crashes, it it crashes. So, and a within solution is kind of pointless at that point. Um, but uh, the best way to do it is to probably just go to the Steam discussion page, and uh, we have a little thread for bug reporting, and oh, just great. just post the screenshot there, and we'll have it. We'll have a go at it. That's that's the easiest way to do it at this point right at the source where the game is located on steam there's a discussion page and there's a thread for bug reporting you know upload the the uh the screenshot with the error on the uh, image uh sharing service and just post it there that's probably the easiest thing to do nice and always try to be as descriptive as possible if you can remember what keys you pressed definitely do that that will help him out a ton uh details 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 please um Alternatively, uh, I do have a Discord server that I'm running as a part of my game development community. Uh, most of the people I talk to uh, about game development, share our project info, kind of are stationed there. So if you post it there, I'll definitely see it. And there's a link to that also in the uh, uh, on the discussion page for the Steam uh, Steam game. It just it really depends on what's easier for you. Okay, and in the description, um, I will have a link to your YouTube channel. Uh, mm-hmm. I will have a link to your Discord as well. And uh, is there any other specific link that I should include uh, as far as like the open access goes, the beta access? Um, oof, so many links, too many links. Um, <laughs> the, what I can do, what I can do is set up a small page on the website, and I can give that link to you. Sounds so this good. would be the studio's website and the page for this particular project. And uh, what it's going to have is it's just going to have an emailing list. You just put in your email, click submit, and I'll be sending the keys to all of those, uh, to all of the emails in that particular mailing list. I think that makes it the easiest. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Now, uh, with the uh, with the beta keys, what I can do is I can also send you some keys. So if you ever feel like you can, if you ever talking to someone who might be actually interested in this sort of thing, Again, the further we can spread this, the better. At this point, it's all about just engagement and kind of throwing this game under the weather. 
Okay, great. So if you're watching, leave a comment. I may have like a pinned comment down below and it just says, you know, who wants to play? You can always just say me and I will try to get uh, you a beta key. And from there you can test it out and please definitely send feedback over to him. Uh, and that way they can get the game, you know, to its optimal state. And then, you know, they can keep moving forward and ultimately get it officially released. Yep. So that out works best. outside of Steam, do you have any other, I guess, places that the game could potentially be released? Like, is there any, let's say there's somebody at home right now. Um, there, there's a guy called Death Knight who uh, follows um, my YouTube and he's a diehard console player. Uh, he doesn't technically have a computer, though. Is there any chance to get this game on console maybe in in the far future? Uh, that is always a possibility, and especially with the way the game is, what the game is, and it it's a pretty good chance that uh, we're going to be putting it on console. Uh, the only limita limitation at this point is just getting access to the tools that allow you to put it up on, on a console, because we don't have a terribly controversial game. Um, so there should be from what I understand, any sort of licensing or uh, allotment issues for putting up a game on, on the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store. Um, it really just a matter of getting the specific like subscription uh, subscription extension from our uh, from the manufacturers of our engine or the, the developers of our engine. Because they actually have the export extensions for PlayStation 4. They just oh, got sweet. one for the Switch. Uh, for Xbox One, and there's this a whole bunch of others, um, including mobile extensions too. So it just takes um, it's just going to take a little bit of uh, financial success to actually acquire those. And after that, it, the controls are pretty much the same. We already have uh, controller support for um, for the desktop game. In oh, fact, that's it awesome! Is, it is highly advised that the the players play with the controller. Uh, and it supports up to four controllers on the same machine, so it's a four-player co-op on one machine. Kind of works out, right? So that's sick. We we don't really see any sort of immediate block in our way uh, that we need to surpass to put up a game on on a console. In your opinion, is there a certain controller that you like to use? Xbox, maybe uh, Super Nintendo, uh, PlayStation. Uh, well. I I did not grow up with uh, consoles. Uh, I grew up with PC gaming. Uh, I only got a console when I was, I think, in like grade 11 in high school. And I finally got a part-time job and I got myself an Xbox 360. So that is the console that I kind of grew up with. I don't have a sort, sort of like attachment to it or any sort of uh, sentimental value attached to it. Uh, it it is it is what I had around, so I guess I got used to the what you're Xbox accustomed controller. to. Yeah, yeah, th this is what I got accustomed to. Uh, but interestingly enough, later on, I also got myself a whole bunch of um, uh, PlayStation Four, uh, PlayStation Three controllers, the DualShock controllers, and I was running them with a utility, um, and I was playing Artag Rise with an, a PlayStation controller for the sake of testing, right? Uh, so. Either or does the job just fine. Awesome. Well, man, I, I greatly appreciate you taking some time and chatting with me. Uh, Likewise. Is there anybody that you'd like to give a shout out to that maybe helped you along the way? Maybe your partner in crime who helped you make the game or anybody else? Yeah, the, the first shout out for sure is Timothy Canner. He's the other part. He's the other brainchild behind this prob uh, program, uh, behind this project. And he is pretty much responsible for half of the levels that are currently in the game. Um, another guy that I want to give a shout out is Arya, who is another one of, my, of our friends. He's also been helping me out to make some levels. Uh, and his it, it's funny because he got on the project because he complained that the levels are way too difficult. Um, he has never played our game before. And when we invited him over to try to play the game with us uh, in co-op mode... He was the only one lacking behind. <laughs> because Tim and I are so accustomed to the controls. We are the builders of this game. So we know all the nooks and crannies. And yep. We know how to how to traverse the levels. So 
it was great experience to have somebody who has not been involved in the development of the game to actually try it out. So Arya was complaining that the game is too difficult. He he couldn't even get past the tutorial levels. <laughs> Dang. We thought, oh, it's tutorial or not? These are so simple, but he couldn't he couldn't get accustomed to the uh, or he couldn't get past the tutorial levels. Um, and uh, it also gave me some insight in, into the fact how important tutorials are because. For I think a good thirty minutes when the first time we played the game, he was not even holding down the sprint button. Oh uh, yeah. So he couldn't yeah. make the lengthy jumps and nobody could figure out like what is wrong with you? Why can't you make these jumps? And that just kinda gave me the insight. He's not pressing the sprint button. So I had to put that in as a tutorial. Right? Something that uh, we oversee as developers as something rudimentary has to be hammered in via some sort of a an educational step. Yep. Uh so shout outs to him for helping me out kind of see these issues and he's still helping me out with the building of the levels. He's getting his copy of Game Maker Studio, so you can help me out from home. That's awesome. You influenced him, man. Maybe he'll uh you know officially join the team and uh I think that's cool. That's great. Um to everybody watching at home, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll see you next time.